All right, we are here at the weekend, and I think things are going to start to get soggy. But we're supposed to have um, that ring of fire eclipse over the weekend. So let's get over to Ron Hilliard, who has more on our forecast and on the eclipse. Hey, Ron. Hey, it's so cool that we have this eclipse happening, Christy. But we have the clouds and the rain that's going to be in our forecast, much like today. Right now, you see that cloud cover and the rain, especially as you get to the north, north of M59, as you get into Detroit, Farmington Hills, Westland. Right now, we just have the cloud cover, but certainly we are all in store for the rainfall because there's a lot of it. And all this that's back over toward the west has to make its way through our area. So as we look into downtown right now, it is gloomy out there. Temperatures out there ranging from about 50 degrees around the pier in Pontiac. That's where we have the rainfall up to around 54 degrees at City Airport where it is still just cloudy. So the rainfall is going to be with us tonight, all of us. And then as we get into the overnight hours, it is going to be soggy, breezy, windy, wet. It is going to be messy out there. And that is all going to be impacting our opportunity to see what's happening with the eclipse. So today temperature is getting up only to around the upper 50s and we have the cloud cover. Now, what will this be like for those who are seeing the eclipse without all the cloud cover out there? Well, I have a chance to speak with NASA and here's a little bit of our conversation. Unfortunately, right here in Detroit, Michigan, because of the weather and our distance from the path, our odds of seeing this eclipse are still low. But if you can tell us a little bit about the angular eclipse. And for those who may not know, what is the difference between a full solar eclipse and an angular eclipse? Sure. And, you know, I sympathize with you on the weather issue because tomorrow where I am in Maryland, it's going to be cloudy and rainy. So I don't think I'll see much either. But for, um, for, your, for your viewers, so the total eclipse and the annular eclipse. Tomorrow, the annular eclipse is when the moon moves in front of the sun, just like a total eclipse. But the moon's position is such that it doesn't cover the sun completely. So you'll see this wonderful ring of fire, uh, as you can see behind me in the studio. So that is um, why it's called annular. Annular just means ring in Latin. So the total eclipse is when the moon covers the sun completely. So it'll be complete darkness for those in the path. So the annular eclipse, the path of that is from Texas to Maine. Uh, even though the contiguous 48 states, will, everybody will get a little something. So in Detroit, you'll get a little bit of bite taken out of the sun tomorrow. Um, and then for the total eclipse, that path goes from Texas to Maine. So Detroit is very, very close to the path of totality. And that means that the sun will be almost completely blocked out. It'll be quite a sight to see. What is the safest and best method of viewing this eclipse? That's an excellent question. So we never look at the sun directly anyway. It's too strong for our eyes. It would damage our eyes. So that's the same for an eclipse. So for the annular eclipse, you have to use either solar viewing glasses or an indirect viewing method. So an indirect viewing method can be very easy. You could make a pinhole camera. Um, and sometimes nature provides a pinhole camera for you. In 2017, <clears throat> there was a partial eclipse happening in Washington, D.C., where I was working. I wasn't at NASA at the time, but I was watching the NASA broadcast, and I decided to go to the courtyard to see what it looked like. And I went out, and normally there's beautiful dappled light from the trees you know, coming down on the pavement. But that day, there were crescent suns littering the pavement because that was the pinhole camera effect, the light being filtered through the leaves left a trail of, of partial, uh, partial eclipses on the ground. Now, you had mentioned that um, once upon a time you were watching the stream for NASA. So for those who, of course, here in Michigan and Maryland who may not have the greatest vantage point or the opportunity to see it, what are the ways that they can view it and watch it? Yeah, so I encourage folks to watch the NASA broadcast tomorrow starting at 11.30 a.m. Eastern Time. Um, that will, uh, it will go from 11.30 to 1.15, I believe. And there'll be a lot of coverage of the eclipse uh, path from various locations where my colleagues will be located. Um, and we'll have some, some scientists talking about the work that they also do. If people want to learn more about uh, the science that we do, the sun science called heliophysics, they can go to uh, the NASA website, nasa.gov, 
and they can look into the Heliophysics Big Year, big name for a big year. It is the celebration of the sun where we encourage everybody to get involved. So the annular eclipse, even if the weather's not good, it's not your only chance to get involved with and study the sun. For us, the Heliophysics Big Year goes from tomorrow, uh, that's the beginning, and it will extend all the way through the end of next year, December 2024. Now, again, our chances of seeing the eclipse are poor here, but in the event that you can see it, it starts a little before noon, it's peak around one o'clock, and then it wraps up a little bit later into the afternoon. And here's the chances of seeing the eclipse around here. They are going to be low. I'm going to show you where you're going to see it best. It is going to be on the West Coast over here. We're in the poor for the Great Lakes, so you might have to do a little traveling out there, Christy, in order to see it. Yeah. That's right, but we do have this year to celebrate the sun. That was a great interview. Thanks yes, so much, Ron. Thank you have you. a good weekend, okay? Likewise.